These are quarterly meetings that we have departments uh, with departments in the city of Philadelphia to review quarterly performance. This happens to be um, where we are reviewing quarter four of fiscal year 11, so it's a year-end review as well. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, actually, if we can, before I turn it over to Rich, if we can just go through and uh, start off with introductions. Great. Rich Nagrin, Managing Director and Deputy Mayor for Administration and Coordination. Dave Wilson, Deputy Managing Director. Rosetta Lou, 301 Contact Center Director. Stuart Alter, Senior Program Manager, Division of Technology. Dan Heitzer, Deputy CIO, Business Improvement Services. Michael McAnally, Deputy Director, Office of Human Resources. Albert Tatilio, Director of Human Resources. Celia O'Leary, Deputy Director of HR. Ryan Albert, Deputy Director of HR. James Tatari, Deputy Director of HR, responsible for employee benefits. Kay Walters, Philly Stat Analyst, Philly Stat. And Catherine Lamb, Director of Philly Stat. And actually, before I turn it over to Rich, if I can just <laughs> remind everybody to keep uh, uh, cell phones off the table just because they create feedback. I'm looking at you, Dan Heitzer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and silence them because the mics will pick it up. Okay. Um, um, I wanted to take a second before we begin and before I turn it over to Al and his team, not only to thank you all for doing such a great job putting this pack together, but this is the first time on television, but we've done, uh, this is I think our third session, and, and you guys have been incredibly supportive and embraced this model in a, in a meaningful way. I want to thank you for all your hard work working with Kat and her team. I also wanted to say a personal thank you to you, Al, over the, the last several weeks. You have been a, a great colleague and a partner with me as we start to make significant changes in the Department of Technology, Adele Abid, our new CIO, who uh, the mayor introduced with an executive order today, um, will be here shortly. But um, you were an important part of that process, um, including some tough decisions we made um, amongst the senior leadership at technology. And having you at my side uh, during those uh, decisions and during that process was really important to me. And I want to thank you for that personally. Thank you. So with that. I'll With that, I'd like to acknowledge before we start, we have a few people in the audience. We have uh, the chairperson for the Civil Service Commission, Doris Smith, and Commissioner Pedro Rodriguez. And also notice we have the Revenue Commissioner, uh, Keith Richardson, and the uh, Records Commissioner, Joan Decker, in the audience, along with a number of members of my staff. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. And I also see representatives of uh, Councilman Green's office in the pack. I wanted to say I thank you. Sorry, I couldn't see you Thanks back there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so the core mission of the Office of Human Resources is to attract, select, retain a qualified, diverse, and effective workforce that supports the goals of the city. Uh, OHR accomplishes this core mission by administering the civil service system. We are the keepers of the civil service system. We classify and determine the compensation for all civil service positions. There are approximately 1,000 uh, positions within the civil service. Um, we have approximately 24,000 uh, full-time civil service employees. We, de we develop and administer all civil service examinations. We establish the eligible lists that are used for both appointment and promotion. Uh, we ensure that the Home Rule Charter and the provisions of the Civil Service Commission are uh, complied with, regard with regards to appointments uh, and promotions. And we design and administer a competitive yet cost-effective benefits package for non-represented and civil service exempt employees and a number of fair share employees who are union representative but have chosen to uh, enroll in our city benefit package. Uh, so the strategic directive direction of, of our office is to transform the city of Philadelphia's would help if I do that with it. <laughs> would uh, transform the city of Philadelphia's HR function to a world class high performing entity through shared services and strategic services. Uh, we began a pilot in July of 2010, thanks to Mr. Negrin's uh, help. Uh, our office took over the responsibility for the HR functions for eight administrative departments that report under Rich. And that pilot program is now going on strong, uh, entering into its second year, and we're talking about expanding it. Much of this presentation will talk about some of the advancements we've made with that pilot program. Uh, we also are focused on designing and implementing, in coordination with, with the Division of Technology, 
uh, and with the finance department, an automated time and attendance system uh, that, that will eventually be integrated with the uh, finance department's <coughs> payroll system. Uh, as I mentioned before, we, we <coughs> provide our employees with a competitive, competitive benefits package. Um, we are in the process of upgrading a 20-year-old test management system. Uh, it's caused us some uh, some grief in the past year, but we're getting through that. Uh, and as I said, it's 20 years old. It needed to be upgraded. Uh, and we are performing succession planning for the departments that report uh, to Rich. So that's what we we strive to do in addition to our day-to-day -day activities of, of maintaining the civil service system. Uh, so some key points that, that we will focus on today. Um, our benefits spend for fiscal 11, which we've just completed, uh, we found that we were $22.6 million less than our benefits spend for fiscal year 09. $22.6 million less in spending. Uh, we were also $5.2 million less than budgeted for last fiscal year. Uh, and we did that without making any major plan design changes. There were some minor plan design changes. But just through better administration, we were able to, to save $22.6 million when everyone else is experiencing double-digit increases in the cost of benefits. That's extraordinary. Uh, thank you. Uh, progress is being made with Disease, the, the disease management programs. We had hoped to start it in January of 11. We now hope to start it in January of 12. Uh, we ran into some uh, legal issues concerning privacy that we were very sensitive about, and we've been working with the law department. We're not 100% through those yet, but we're optimistic. Uh, our shared strategic services, one of the things that we've em emphasized this year, Rich, was uh, to make sure that our performance evaluations, our performance management system was done. And I'm pleased to report, and, and I'll make a correction here, that our eight departments uh, have a compliance rate of 30, that is 39% better than the compliance rate for the city average uh, in our first year. Uh, through consolidation and partial automation, we are also able to take over the payroll functions for 900 employees with three less uh, full-time payroll clerks. Uh, that was a, a combination of consolidation and automation, partial automation. Uh, our shared services division was able to process transactions right the first time uh, at a rate of 94% compared to 74% for the citywide average, a 20% improvement over the citywide average. Um, and last fall, we introduced a new customer service measure uh, that focused on our target test dates. I mean, we would establish target test dates, but weren't very good at meeting them. So we've made that a core measure, and we're seeing uh, substantial improvement as, as we, you know, work towards that goal. So before you move ahead, I just want to, I know that's the executive summary, and we're going to hear in more detail about each of those, but I just wanted to say fantastic job on behalf of all of us to this team, I and mean, I think the overall outcomes. I think when you look at, it, I think it's is it eight or nine total metrics. Mm -hmm. You guys have clearly achieved four. It came really close on the fifth, and you've made substantial progress on the rest. So, and I know we'll go through that one at a time, but I think that's exactly what this is all about. This is about continuous improvement and starting to pay attention to the things that are so important to us. And you guys are doing that. So, thank you for that. Well, thank you, and and credit really goes to the people in the back who are working towards that. Good. So with that, I'm going to ask Celia to talk about uh, <coughs> some shared services metrics. Okay, we were one of our metrics is to look at the percent of employment transactions that we do that are done correctly the first time. Employment transactions include the whole employee life cycle, hiring them, promoting them, transferring them, separating them, putting them on leaves of absence, and so on. The data that's required and the time frames required for each one are different, and they're all based in the civil service regulations. So. There can be some complexities around doing that. And we expected that um, the fact that we do it more often and we have more folks with greater experience would cause us to have some economies of scale and advantages of depth of knowledge. So we track how we're doing. And you can see that, you know, we're a little ups and downs and so on, but overall, the shared services group was able to do this with 94.4% accuracy. 
This slide shows 91%, but what I did was do a deeper dive into the data to look at what types of transactions were being returned for correction. And um, when I subtracted out the performance reports, which are pretty easy, those you don't have to think about, you just hand them in. Um, we found that only 74% of the transactions who that were more complicated were being done accurately the first time from our clients out in the departments, whereas we were able to achieve a 94.4% accuracy rate, which I'm very happy about. We are putting a lot of resources into training folks who give us data, but um, we're still doing it better, and I'm pleased that that's working out the way I expected. So just to, so with the performance evaluations included, though, you're mm -hmm. at the 91%? 91%. Okay. So without it, you're at 94 but the volumes are huge for performance reports. Okay. For quarter four alone, there were over 5,000 of them. So when I subtracted those out to look at the more substantive transactions, yeah. we found that it was a broader range between our, our accuracy rate and everyone else's. Okay. So Celia, is there, mm -hmm. is there a plan in place or is there a way for us to communicate sort of some of what you're doing, um, whether it's a best practice or just better training mm -hmm. um, to help get the 74% up amongst the other departments? Um, my right-hand person, Sheila Pate, where is she? Right there. Did a class with me at the end of June Great. Um, for a whole group of folks who do this out in the departments. It was very well received. We would like to do it again. We did push out training materials, written training materials, that they could circulate among the rest of their staff who weren't able to come in. Uh, so we do that. Al runs an HR manager meeting every month, and Sheila and I are usually standing up and giving people tips and tidbits and little sheets when we see errors recurring. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do as much training as we can on a shoestring, but we're making the effort. <laughs> can we explain, just for the benefit of the public, mm -hmm. why this is important um, if, if there are, if it is returned a second time or a third time because of errors, um, what, what is lost in terms of time or resources? Well, from the employee standpoint, they're not getting paid. Yeah or they're missing potential benefits because if it's an FMLA event and they're going out of pay status, it could impact their family significantly if they drop out of el benefits eligibility. Right. So it's really important for many of the transactions that it be done accurately and quickly and timely because a lot of the stuff is time sensitive. Okay. Um, an employee transferring to another department or promoting to another department would still be charged to their old department. Gotcha. That creates some accounting issues. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 we like it done on time so yeah. that we don't have to undo anything. And it also creates extra work to send it back and, and process it again. Okay. okay. Good. Thank you. The next slide um, is another measure that we have. It's the paycheck adjustment rate, which is not exactly a paycheck <coughs> error rate, but it's as close as we could find to measure it. Some adjustments, which uh, we've defined as a change to a, an entry in the payroll system that happens the pay period after, either immediately after or any time thereafter, <laughs> the effective date of whatever it was we're posting. Um, sometimes it's legitimate, for example, employees can bring in a sick leave certificate up to two days after they're sick if this crosses the pay period boundary and it's legitimate post-adjustment. Okay. However, if an error happens, then we're also fixing it in, in a subsequent pay period. So it's a rough measure of errors. We've tried, we set a goal of not exceeding a target of half an adjustment per person, which is kind of mathematical, but that's what we were looking at. And I think you'll recall I was practically dancing out of my chair <laughs> at the end of quarter three because we dropped below the target. And at the time I attributed it to bringing up uh, Oracle Time and Labor, which is an online um, time collection piece of software which we rolled out for three of our departments. So I really thought that was it, you know. Yeah. But then it zoomed up again for quarter four, <laughs> so I was really disappointed. So we did a, a, a better dive down into the data and found out that we think one of our challenges is, and we knew it was there, but this really illustrated it. We have 127 folks in the managing director's office who are on bi-weekly timesheets. And the nature of it is they submit their time once every two weeks on the payroll closing date. But then we've got two hours to post time for 127 people before the payroll closes, and which is impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and there's another step. They submit it. The supervisor has to approve it, and then we get it. So it's really right. two things have to occur before 9 o'clock in the morning. Which is so. never going to happen. But if we can, I'll do a little commercial. If we had an electronic interface to the payroll <laughs> system, <laughs> you know, then we wouldn't have to retype it, and it would go straight in, and we wouldn't have this problem. 
And so, that is something that we were working on for budgetary reasons and because uh, we're looking at an ERP system, sure. we've put that piece on hold. So there is somewhat of a delay, but we ultimately think that automating the time and attendance system is, is the way to go for the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we know what the timeline is for getting time clocks in the other five departments? We don't have any money budgeted for it, so okay. we have some time clocks purchased for fleet management, but we need to have some IT resources to actually have that configured. Uh, we would have to purchase time clocks for, for the other departments. Okay. So right the now there's nothing planned for FY12. Are we using the same clocks in the same system for the three that we're, we're utilizing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what, what is that? It's called Time Link. And it came already bundled with the software to interface with Oracle, so it was very cost effective. Okay. Great. But, but the other big piece of this is that, so, so the time and attendance uh, project was a three-phase project. One was to automate the time capture. The second phase was to then interface that data directly with the payroll system. So you didn't have to basically download the information and then upload it manually into the payroll system. And then the third piece was to overlay um, leave accruals and balances on top of that. We only got through the first phase in three departments, which was automating the time capture. We still don't have the interface with the payroll system. Uh, that's where we think the biggest bang for the buck will be, when we actually have that interface into the payroll system. Great. I'm just going to uh, remind everybody, Adele Abid has joined us. Um, welcome, Adele. Adele is our new Thank CIO. You. Um, um, Adele is going to be meeting with Al shortly over the next several weeks to talk about technology priorities as, he's, as he goes through and does some onboarding um, in the city of Philadelphia. Make sure that I, mean, I think this is one area where we need to discuss. Um, he's about to lead us uh, uh, with, with some help from David and myself through a prioritization process now that he's here. Um, so it's important that this and other projects that we talk about will be part of that conversation as we as we look at those things in terms of trying to find resources to, to get the most bang for our buck citywide from an enterprise perspective in the city of Philadelphia. So thank you for that. Thank you. And we're also here to help Adele with any HR issues or questions that he may have. So welcome Great. aboard. Thank you. Strategic services, Brian? Okay. So I think we've talked a little bit about performance evaluations. The civil service regulations have a provision that employees receive, at least annually, a performance evaluation from their supervisor that has been reviewed by their manager as well. And it kind of lets the employee know how they're doing in certain rating factors and overall performance. These um, rating factors are very important uh, in layoff scores, and so we, we'd really prefer to kind of layoff employees in accordance with uh, quality, so it's very important to have the uh, performance evaluations completed. Uh, we set a target goal of and hopefully one day award employees on the basis of quality as well. Yes, yeah, we'll write that down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just just so we can get that. <laughs> Actually, we do. In in we're joking, but in the civil service regulations, also some employees get credit based on their overall rating in right. you know, um, um, exams and uh, um, you know pr uh, promotional opportunities. Right. So we set a goal of 80% for the group of shared services departments, and uh, as you can see, four of our departments have exceeded that goal. Three have not, uh, including the Office of Human Resources. It's slightly embarrassing to be below our own goal. Uh, we, but we have a reason. We have a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you notice, MDO is one of those as well. Yeah. And, and I'm going to blame Rosetta and 311 for that, <laughs> for that entire uh, part of that. Goal. Well, actually, um, August 1st is the deadline for the managing director's office and we received almost all of the ones from 311. So Great. Thank we you. expect this nice to be much job. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But in, in the case of OHR, we took over a unit from the health department last year and they crossed the dates and so uh, sort of a, a large portion, 10% or more of our employees actually crossed that date and that's how we missed the performance reports for those. But we're working on that for this year as well. So are you going to change the date for it's the MEU? The yeah, they, yeah, they'll be with us now. Okay. They were with health before when that cross happened. Um, so are we going to be 100% next time? We will. Okay. You heard? Yes, you, boss. You guys were all, <laughs> boss said yes, and everybody just looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> this My uh, performance re evaluations are already completed. <laughs> nice, nice. So. Civil wow. Service Commission is at 100%. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Showing us how to get it done. <laughs> um, 
the group of shared services departments, as Al mentioned, is at 87 percent, so if you, uh, if you total this out, and that does compare to a citywide average of only 48 percent. So even um, though we haven't met, met the target goal, we are exceeding the citywide average. Can we talk about that? I mean, that's really outrageous, right? I mean, how, wh what can we do as OHR, as, you know, the Office of Human Resources, to help the rest of the city kind of, kind of figure this out? I think uh, one of it is presentations like this where we talk about the importance of performance evaluations and um, you know, I think when department commissioners know about this, you know, they kind of light a fire under their supervisors and managers. And you else. really, departments just need to follow through. It has to be a top-down top approach. Uh, I think later on in the presentation we'll talk about an investment in our people and might show how that might tie into just driving down the message that we have to we have to be uh, focused on performance management. Yeah. It, it, it also helps with employee morale. I mean, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but uh, we've heard many times employees say, well, I haven't got a performance rating in five years, seven years, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I think it's just very important to let them know at least once a year, you know, if they're doing a great job, they should know it. Mm -hmm. so, and if they're not, they should know it. I mean, good, good managers are giving constant feedback, but it's the, the, yes. the, this is the like structure the formal. of the formal. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel there should be intermission music for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a, a preview of coming attractions. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, a metric in place uh, where we were uh, pushing ourselves to make sure that new hires were enrolled in the benefits program um, within the first 30 days. Well, we were meeting that 100% of the time. So we took that out because it, it wasn't a, a measure that we needed to follow through on. And we're now looking at certification, the number of days from certification to appointment. So we don't have the data yet for this. Mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, for the next uh, Philly Stat session uh, for quarter one. The reason why this is important is that the mayor has a goal of efficiency, and one of the outcomes is to reduce the time to hire. Mm -hmm. And by focusing in on all phases of the hiring process, but in this case, that period of time from certification to appointment we think will be helpful in, in meeting that mayor's goals. Yes. And I know you've been mapping the time to hire. You've been mapping the entire process. Um, any any outcomes or preliminary? I'm not going to hold you to any of these numbers, but do we know soup to nuts what time to hire is at this point? Do you have a rough estimate? Kat, have you been able to figure that out? Yeah, not yet. So this is a major yeah. piece of it, the days yeah. from certification to appointment, and we're very close on finishing this calculation. Um, part of the reason why we need to move to an ERP or some sort of comprehensive hiring system is to yeah. do any sort of calculations in the city about how long it takes us for the hiring process is a very manual, data-intensive process that's not easy nor elegant. Um, but we're close. So the first, the fiscal year, uh, quarter one of fiscal year 12, we'll be able to report out on that entire project as well as use this as a performance metric for, for the Department of for the Civil Service, I mean, for HR. I, I can't stress how important this effort is. I and mean, I think when you look at your, your point, um, the mayor's goal five and, and government running more efficiently, this is one of the things that I think um, human resources are constantly evaluated on, right? Our ability to identify, attract, bring in, and we'll talk about this some more in the investing in our people piece but good quality people who, who get on as soon as possible through um, as fairly streamlined a process <coughs> as possible while, while obviously abiding by all the appropriate regulations and, and, and the process. So um, Godspeed with this because I think this is something that we need to pay a lot of attention to. Right. And in fairness, I also do want to say the appointment process, I mean, certification to appointment, it's heavily, there's a lot that OHR has to do, but a lot of it is what the department has to do it's as well. It's outside your control, right? So right. It, it's a partnership. To get this down or to really improve this, it is a partnership between mm -hmm. OHR and, uh, and the, the other operating department. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some other agencies such as finances. And we'll be well, asking this question yes. of all of them. I mean, I, you know, if they own a part of this process, I think we're going to invite them here to have a conversation about how to improve this process. Well, I think what makes Philly Stat such a great uh, productivity tool is that it helps us to actually focus on on these areas and then figure out ways of improving it. So this is the right form for this. Celia, customer service. To take a look at a small part of what we just, just discussed, the certification process, which is a little bit of human resources jargon. Um, a certified group are folks who are being 
um, eligible candidates from eligible lists that are being presented to a department saying, here are the two people you can interview for every vacancy. That requirement goes all the way back to the Home Rule Charter, which is why it's very hard to change. So we need to do the certification process, and this slide illustrates one of our service goals, which is to provide a certification of candidates within two days of request. Um, the chart shows the, the colored part of the bar shows our achievement of the goal. The small rectangle inside is showing you the volume statistics. Just so you have an idea, I have a very small group of three people who do this for the entire city government. You can see that over the course of the year, they certified over 10,000 candidates. So we've been steadily getting better over the course of the year. We started out quarter one only getting or achieving our goal 70% of the time. So you have three people that over the, just as an example, that over the fourth quarter certified 3,100 folks. That's correct. Okay. Off of, you know, we have over 400 active eligible lists. So, so is this a staffing issue? We actually uh, lost in quarters between quarters one and two, we lost two-thirds of that staff. Two of the three people left, so...